Hello, hello, hello. It is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom, SP3. Back once again with the three count with SP3 for December 18th, 2019. I haven't talked to you guys since this past weekend. I want to thank all of you for checking out the three count over the weekend, as well as my ROH final battle review. I sacrificed three and a half hours of my time to watch that show and review it for the YouTube channel. So I appreciate everyone who watched. So you appreciated my sacrifice. Coming out of a big weekend with NWA Into the Fire, uh, ROH Final Battle, as well as WWE TLC, we're gonna be giving you an update on the condition of Kyrie Sane. We're gonna be talking about Kazuka Okada, the IWGP Heavyweight Champion, having a big role this summer, and we're gonna be talking about a final close of the book of the story of independent pro wrestler, New York's own Matt Travis. So let's start it off with the first count where we're talking about Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane teamed up with her tag team partner, Asuka of the Kabuki Warriors, to burst a Raw, Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch, as well as the Queen Charlotte Flair, this past Sunday at WWE TLC. In a 26 minute TLC match, uh, Kyrie Sane, about halfway through, suffered a mild concussion, either from a, a shot of a monitor to the back of the head uh, from Becky Lynch, who was throwing the monitors around, or from Charlotte Flair, who gave her a T bone suplex into the guardrail where Kyrie's, the back of Kyrie's head hit the con. Crete. Uh, a lot of people were very critical of Charlotte Flair's actions during this match when it seemed that to a lot of people that Kyrie was suffering concussion. Charlotte attempted a power bomb onto her, which Kyrie did not even want to go up for. And then when Kyrie did not uh, sell a spear later on into in the match, uh, Charlotte smacked her in the head. There's been other footage that's come out of Becky Lynch who pushed uh, uh, Kyrie underneath the ring, and both superstars Charlotte Flair as well as Becky Lynch went out on Twitter and complimented Kyrie for gunning it through that 26 minute matchup with the mild concussion. So coming out of that, the update on Kyrie saying, WWE has not divulged any uh, exact details on the condition of Kyrie Sane. They haven't even come out and said that she had a mild concussion or a, a legit concussion. They just say that they're monitoring her. They haven't come up with a complete diagnosis, which in my mind, WWE doesn't have a history of letting us know when a person has a concussion unless they are out for a long period of time. So I think it's safe to say that Kyrie has a mild concussion. She, uh, PW Insider reported last night that Sane has been pulled from all the post-Christmas uh, WWE live events and also she has not been cleared for in-ring action. She appeared on Monday Night Raw just uh, bringing out Asuka. She just stopped at the stage and then went backstage. But she did appear in the post-Monday Night Raw taping for next week's edition of Monday Night Raw in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, she appeared with Asuka during a talking segment. She has not wrestled since WWE TLC. So we are going to be watching and the condition of Kyrie Sane. And we're going to hit you back with a further update, hopefully later in the week, when we find out more about the condition of Kyrie Sane. We hope she has a very speedy recovery. Second count, we got to talk about another Japanese superstar. One of the biggest stars in, in the last decade. I know a lot of people have been talking about wrestler of the decade, but there is one man from the New Japan promotion who deserves to be in everyone's top three to top five wrestlers of this decade, and that's Kazuka Okada, the IWGP heavyweight champion, the I think it's four times, yes, four time IWGP heavyweight champion. Uh, he will be carrying the Olympic torch, the 2020 Olympic torch to begin the 2020 Olympic games through Tokyo. He's one of 42 different personalities from uh, celebrities as well as athletes from Tokyo, Japan that will be uh, taking part in carrying the flame. It's a passing of the flame that starts off every Olympic games and it's quite the honor given to Kaj 
Kajuka Okada. This is something that no other wrestler can say that's being a part of, not even in the past over here when we've had the Olympic Games in places like Atlanta, Georgia in 96, we did not even see Kurt Angle who won the Olympic gold medal uh, back in like 2000 and stuff. He didn't even carry an Olympic torch. So no other wrestler has been given this honor, this privilege until Kazuka Okada. It kind of speaks volumes for how the Japanese culture looks at professional wrestling. They view professional wrestling on the same level of their major sports as well as their major uh, film and movies like film, movies, and TV. The New Japan is on that same level with sports, with uh, media. It's one of the biggest things in Japan, so it makes sense for Kajuka Okada to be a part of this, but it is quite the honor, and it's definitely a big plus for us true wrestling fans. It's something that we I didn't think was possible about 10 years ago, so this is another claim for Kazuka Okada to become wrestler of the next decade, for the 2020 decade, because he's kicking it off on a big plus. He's going to be in the main event of the uh, Wrestle Kingdom 14 show on January 4th as he defends the IWGP Heavyweight Championship against Koto Ibushi in one of the most anticipated matchups on the entire Wrestle Kingdom card. And if he wins that, he will take part in the first ever double title match as the IWGP Heavyweight Championship and the IWGP Intercontinental Championship will be joined together. We'll be combined on January 5th as both champions will battle it out so we can have one double champion. So Kazuko Okada starts off the year at Wrestle Kingdom and he's going to go into the summer carrying the Olympic torch, which to me says... If, it's, if I'm New Japan, I might think about making Okada my first ever double champion. Double champion carrying the Olympic torch to start off the Olympic Games. I mean, only makes sense to me. Think about it, New Japan. Think about it. So for the third count, we got to talk about the story of Matt Travis. Matt Travis is if one of the more popular independent uh, wrestlers here in the New York City area. He passed away due to getting hit by a garbage truck who made, who made an illegal uh, U-turn on 125th Street in, in East Harlem uh, while Matt Travis was riding a, bi uh, riding a bicycle. He's one of 27 different bicyclists who have passed away uh, due to stuff like this in the New York City area in 2019. And it's been a story that's been following along because the garbage truck driver sped off after hitting Matt Travis and killing him. So finally, after three and a half months, uh, Luke Vu is the man that has been arrested. According to MSN, who reported this story yesterday, Luke Vu is a 48-year-old garbage truck driver. It's not even aware to anybody, as the report has given us, if Luke Vu knew that he hit Matt Travis at the time of this incident. He's been arrested for a number of different charges, including reckless uh, driving, reckless endangerment, and failure to do, do care. If I'm him, I would just try to, to settle because you're gonna do some time, man. You're gonna do some time. You, you hit somebody, you killed somebody, and you sped off. His only plea and his only argument against it is the fact that he, he possibly did not know. But our thoughts and prayers, most importantly, are to the Matt Travis family, everyone that is a friend of Matt Travis, that knew Matt Travis. This is something that needed to be solved. This was a case that needed to be ended so that people can really move on and be able to grieve. Us in the New York City area that have watched Matt Travis as was watching his his career rise up is definitely still broken up about it. We're still in the grieving process. So this allows us to grieve even more knowing that the man responsible for this action is going to do some time and hopefully he does a long time. So our thoughts and prayers to everyone who knew Matt Travis uh, his friends, his family, and definitely everyone from the HOG family. Uh, we know a couple of people that train there. We definitely have our thoughts and prayers to you guys as well. We know Matt Travis was responsible for training a lot of the students at HOG, so we definitely give our thoughts and prayers to everyone over there as well. So that is this edition of the Three Count with SP3 for December 18th, 2019. Of course, as always, post your comments down below and tell us what you thought of this three count. Give us your thoughts on the Kyrie Sane uh, mild concussion. If you think that she has a full concussion, who do you think is responsible for giving her that concussion? Was it Becky Lynch? Was it Charlotte? Or was it just a series of accidents and you don't really blame anyone?
kind of the logical thing. But of course, put your comments down below what you think of a Kajuka Okada. Okada, the face of New Japan, carrying the Olympic torch in 2020 through Tokyo. Put your comments down below on your thoughts on the whole story of Matt Travis. We want to know your thoughts on, you know, Matt Travis' career and what you think is going to happen to this man responsible for this really tragic incident. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy the Wednesday Night Wars. It's big shows on December 18th. You got Shayna Baszler and Rhea Ripley for the NXT Women's Championship. Finn Balor versus Adam Cole for the NXT Championship. On AEW, you got Jungle Boy versus Chris Jericho. 10, lim 10 minute time limit, uh, non-title matchup. You got SCU versus the Young Bucks for the AEW Tag Team Titles. And the Lucha Bros versus Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. So big shows all around on Wednesday night. We hope you enjoy it, and we hope you enjoyed this edition of the Three Count with SP3. It is me, it is me, your true heel phenom, SP3, signing off until next time.